We're going to talk about sound energy. What you need to know about sound energy is that sound travels in waves. Okay, and sound... is heard by our ears because what happens is is the waves, these are the sound waves, the waves actually are picked up by our ears. Okay, so here's our ear. And what happens is is the sound wave goes into the ear and is transferred into electrical energy which goes to our, our brain. Okay? Um, what you need to know absolutely is that sound travels in waves. And I'll write that down. Okay, travels in waves. You also need to know that uh, sound can be reflected. And that just means that it bounces off of things, okay? So let's say you're standing inside of a cave and you say hello. Well, the cave doesn't say hello back. What happens is, is the sound waves bounce off of the walls, which is why you hear hello, 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 hello. So it's just the, the sound waves going back and forth and bouncing back and forth uh, off of the walls of the cave. Um, sound is reflected, um, so that causes an echo, okay, which is why when you go into an empty house, it sounds very hollow and you can hear yourself um, really loud because you get an echo. Um, another thing that we need to remember about sound reflecting is some animals actually use sound to help them find their food and bats are a perfect example. So if you have a bat that goes out hunting at night, and bats have terrible eyesight, but what they have is this very talented way of finding their food because bats have quite large ears what they do is they send out a sound and that sound goes out and hits a little unsuspecting moth and when the sound wave hits the moth it actually bounces back to the bat and the bat's ears pick up that sound wave and that allows the bat to identify the location of the moth and chomp them up the next thing that you need to know about sound waves is that sound actually can uh, be absorbed too. And what I want you to think about is a room, let's say um, a room full of furniture. If you walk into that room and it's empty, the sound will reflect off of the walls and the ceiling. And you'll hear an echo or um, it'll sound kind of hollow. But if you put furniture in that room and you fill it up with a couch, let's say, and a chair and a rug on the ground, maybe some bookshelves, uh, you will no longer have an echo. That's because sound is absorbed into the objects in the room. And that's why it's quieter in a house with furniture than in a house without furniture, because sound is absorbed. So if you're standing in this room and you speak, the sound waves will get absorbed into the bookshelves and the furniture. But if you're standing in this empty room, the sound waves will actually bounce back and forth off of the walls. The last thing that you need to know about sound energy is that sound has pitch. And pitch is the number of vibrations um, and the size of the sound waves. And one of the best ways to uh, show pitch is with a guitar. And if you know when you have a guitar, you have different sizes of strings. And there's thin, really, really thin, skinny strings on one end. And then there's really thick, thick strings on the other. And if you've ever strummed a guitar, you've heard the difference between the thin strings and the thick strings. Thin strings have a high pitch okay, and the thick strings have a low pitch. Low yeah, pitch. And it's kind of neat because the pitch um, comes from the waves. Um, so a, a high pitch 
would be the waves would look uh, small and quick and a low pitch the waves would look large and slow and that's why the sound is different because the waves look different.